It was three years ago when um, commissioners embarked on a journey to um, improve end of life and palliative care across Worcestershire. Um, and we knew that we had some fantastic services, um, like the ones that we value so highly here at um, St Richard's. But our vision was and is to ensure that everyone, regardless of diagnosis, has the opportunity to access and support um, to enable them to live well until the end of life, to make the choices about their care and for their families and loved ones and carers to be supported on this journey. To this end, we asked over 300 doctors, nurses, patients and carers what they thought would make the difference and make that vision a reality. The answers to this question enabled us to start working with our partners, such as the Acute Trust, the Health and Care Trust and, of course, St Richard's, um, to deliver our vision. We had 14 separate work programmes, of which bereavement was one. Now, three years on, we've achieved much together and we now have a plethora of services which can and do make a difference to those facing the end of life. Many of the services are delivered from here at St Richard's, um, such as the weekend admissions now that we have um, in the hospice, and the provision of a specialist nursing service at weekends, and of course the service that we're here to celebrate the launch of today. A bereavement service that's accessible not only to those families and loved ones who were cared for by St Richard's, but for all. A service which joins up and adds to all of the valued bereavement care that we have here in South Worcestershire. Through the challenges of major NHS reform and the financial challenges we all face, the emerging South Worcestershire CCG Clinical Commissioning Group um, have remained committed to the vision of excellent end of life and palliative care. And it's for this reason that I'm able to stand here today um, and from my heart thank the staff of St Richard's for enabling our shared vision of a comprehensive bereavement service that's accessible to all to come to life. St Richard's have worked with many services to make this bereavement pathway happening, building partnerships beyond these walls which will, and from the reports I've heard from my GP colleagues already, have made a difference and I think you're going to hear today of some of the, the, the impact it's had on, on people. In perspective, we know that bereavement services really do make a difference, we hear about that every day. We know that the death of a loved one or a close friend is one of the most difficult times in each of our lives. Whether or not this is expected following a long-term illness or a sudden death, the, the grieving process is really, really personal. We're absolutely delighted that South Worcestershire Clinical Commissioning Group has identified the need to support the provision of a general bereavement service for South Worcestershire and also delighted they've chosen St Richard's to provide this new service. The aim of the new service is really about providing people with information and links to organisations which may be able to offer help and guidance across a whole range of needs, noting that the experience of bereavement is very, very personal. As Deb has mentioned, we're working very closely with hospitals, emergency services, including the fire service, we have someone from the back there, <laughs> um, to um, promote the service uh, in order that they have information. <coughs> Um, about how to refer into the service. Very, very simply, there's four main strands to this new service. One is the bereavement website, which is listed here. And if anyone wants to have a look at it, we do have a laptop here, and I think Gareth will be able to demonstrate that. And that will actually provide a whole range of useful information, self-help guides, information on financial support, and all a range of other organisations that can provide support and help. The good thing is that obviously that's accessible 24 hours a day. Um, so that's one element of the service. There is a telephone helpline, here is the number, um, who um, is manned by Gareth. Stand up, Gareth. Here's Gareth. <laughs> <laughs> who um, will provide um, support and, and information 9 to 5 on, on a sort of a... Um, from Monday to Friday, uh, and, and again, I think already people have been making contact, and there's been a whole range of advice we've been given. Um, in conjunction to that, we have a bereavement social worker, and Jane is here. <laughs> this is Jane Jackson, and Jane, although employed by St Richard's, is working very, very closely with the team in the Acute Trust with Jonathan, who's there. So. 
Jane is virtually a member of that team in the acute trust, so that enables Jane to pick up really prompt referrals from A&E, some of the more complex deaths that happen in the acute setting, and that's working very, very well. Interestingly, we've had quite a lot of referrals, certainly from schools and for children, for kind of complex um, grief reactions. So again, it's about how Jane can provide that level of support for those individuals experiencing complex grief. We're also in the process of recruiting a bereavement counsellor. Hi. Um, so again, that would be another facility to support um, those people going through that bereavement pathway. Another element of the service is about providing education training around bereavement and that's really awareness raising for professionals. In addition to that, we're providing bespoke awareness sessions for the bereaved, but I think we've been um, more specific about that. So there may be sort of um, sessions, particularly for child death, but that's going to sort of evolve as we go along. Deb has made reference to the fact that the service model has been shaped by a multi-agency reference group and I would like to thank those members of the group, some of which are here today, um, for this, their support over the last month. It's been a great way of working, it's been fun to work in that way and I think the spin-off from working in a very kind of multi-agency way means that it's actually formed relationships and strengthened relationships. So there's been a kind of a, an added bonus to that. Just some special thank yous. I want to thank Age UK, who unfortunately couldn't make it today, uh, but they were very instrumental with us in actually formulating the bid. Um, Andrew Morley, who um, is from Carewise, really, really worked hard and developed the website. And unfortunately, Andrew can't make it today because I think Carewise are having an external inspection and it was kind of an unannounced visit, so unfortunately he can't be with us. But he worked extremely hard in developing the website and noting that the majority of the people on, on the reference group were very sort of IT novices, to try and explain how to get this together was quite challenging for him, so he did it very, very well. I um, wanted to thank particularly Dawn for providing her thoughts and reflections from a service user perspective. And, and last but not least, to Sarah, Head of um, Family Support, for her leadership in developing the service. So thank you, Sarah. We intend to continue to evaluate the effectiveness of the service and really <coughs> welcome any feedback from you on any ways in which we can improve. So please contact us with your thoughts and comments.